Kerry here from Homestead High. Welcome to our homestead. This is our outdoor wood burner. For comments on YouTube about how I'm such an idiot and a moron. I know, I know. You might want to stand back. To kick off the season, we're going to light this fire one time and it's going to burn all winter long. Holy, <laughs> there went my eyebrow. I've had it for seven years now and if my calculations are correct, it's finally paid for itself. If you're thinking about getting one of these, we've had ours for seven years, we're going to tell you if we think it's worth it seven years later. And we're going to give you some valuable tips and tricks for our outdoor wood burner. If you're new to our channel, thanks for stopping by. We're a family of six homesteading in central Wisconsin. We've got goats, we've got chickens, we're on a 20 acre pine forest. And four months ago, my wife Jen, myself, and my four girls purchased our small town movie theater. It was the biggest risk, biggest investment we've ever done. And we've been having a blast running the theater for the last four months. So a lot of the videos we do are about homesteading and about our new movie theater. We also do a lot of camping and have a lot of fun. Let's get started. That is exactly what you want to do. we're in a tent. Well, <laughs> <laughs> So we're going to jump right into our outdoor wood burner seven years later. Well, I'll show you this cute little mouse on the homestead picture. And if you want to jump ahead and you're just interested in seeing the movie theater content, we'll have chapters listed below. We'll talk about the wood burner and then we'll talk about the movie theater. We've got some really exciting developments on both fronts. It's been precisely four months since we closed on the movie theater and we've been having a blast running it as a family. There's just something about this place. It goes back to 1859. It's a magical, magical place. We have so many people coming in that share the love for this theater. And I don't know what it is, but I just get this feeling that the theater is gonna be world famous someday. People are gonna travel from all over the world to come to Montello Theater. There's just something so magical and great about the place. And we get done for the weekend and we wanna go right back. So we're really enjoying it. More to come on the theater later in the video. We just broke even on it, so our investment has paid off after seven years, and that's accounting for a lot because we're heating two separate buildings, we're heating a workshop, and we're also heating all of our water, and we've been doing that for seven years now. So this thing has provided a ton of heat and saved us a bunch of money that we would have paid for propane and we would have paid for electric because we have an electric water heater. This is our outdoor wood furnace, otherwise known as a wood boiler. It's a central boiler and in today's video I'm going to quickly talk about this. It's been seven years since we purchased this and installed it on our homestead. We're going to cover everything on it very, very quickly. Uh, if you're thinking about getting one of these or considering it, you'll want to watch this video. So the first thing is, what does it do? Real quick, I'm gonna tell you. This thing is filled up with water. You can see there's a big, beautiful fire in here. Heats up the water, the water gets pumped into our house. It goes over like a radiator deal over our furnace, and then we just have to turn our furnace fan on. We don't need any propane or natural gas because the hot water is having the air blow through it and that heats the whole house. You want something like this if you're gonna have multiple areas to heat. Frankly, if I was going to just have a single family home, I would get just a wood stove, just a plain little wood stove. I wouldn't get this. A lot of people comment on my videos and they say, why do you have that? Why do you go through 10 cords of wood? That's right, I go through 10 cords of wood a season. They say that's so much wood you go through. Keep in mind, I'm not heating a single home. This heats our large ranch home. It also heats a separate Airbnb with a completely separate furnace. Heats two full homes, also heats our workshop. And on top of that, you can see my breath, it's really cold out right now. On top of that, this heats all of our water and with five women in our house, we go through a ton of hot water. In total, this costed us about $17,000. It's a big investment. The thing that I love with this, and again, this isn't for everybody, I'm not trying to sell it to you. Great for multiple units. The other reason that I absolutely love this seven years and going is because we keep the heat cranked in our house. Now, if I was using propane, I would be looking at that thermostat all the time. Cranking this doesn't make that big of a difference. You're gonna go through some more wood because the water will cool down faster and the door will have to, there's a little electric damper on here. Opens and closes, it regulates the fire. It's really cool. Let's the fire go a really long time. But if your water temperature, which is usually at 185, if that goes down, the little electronic door on here will open. Well, if you keep it really hot, you'll go through a little bit more wood. I don't really mind. I don't really care we account for that. We keep our house nice and toasty. It's so cozy and warm in our house. If I was running propane or natural gas, I'd be staring at the thermostat all the time and I'd be freaking out about it more. And it'd be cold. We'd probably be at like 65 degrees with blankets on. So this keeps everything really nice and warm and cozy and you don't have to worry about the thermostat too much. I really like that. 
but heating multiple buildings. That's why you want something like this if you have a big homestead. We could heat our greenhouse. We could put a heater in our greenhouse. We've got one in our uh, wood workshop on our property. It's one that goes in the corner. It's got a little fan on it. It'll heat the whole garage workshop area up. A couple other things you can use is with radiant heating. We have a forced air furnace and that's what we use it for. This was about $17,000. That was seven years ago. A big part of the cost. This whole unit wasn't 17 grand by the way. The unit was 6,000. 17,000 was the cost with the plumber and all the parts. There's lots of parts. We've got two pumps. We've got underground insulated PEX that goes into the house. We've got the heat exchanger on the water heater, all sorts of valves. We've got the heat exchanger, the coil deal that goes on the furnace times two. So those costs add up. But one way you can save a bunch of money is if you do that plumbing work yourself. And when I bought this, I wasn't comfortable. After seven years of homesteading, learning a lot more about plumbing and fixing things on my property myself and watching YouTube videos, I would be comfortable doing this myself. It's just PEX. It's really pretty simple. I've got a PEX crimper. There's a bunch of valves and stuff like that, but it's pretty straightforward. You can save an incredible amount of money if you're gonna do it that way and install it yourself. The other big thing is, this is one of the um, last models that weren't the super green energy efficient ones. If you go buy one now, they're a lot more efficient than this and they use a lot less wood than this. The downfall though is you have to have really seasoned wood. And I shouldn't say that's a downfall because you should be using really seasoned wood. However, I'm not always on top of my game and I could go cut down a tree right now, a green tree, and I could take a log and throw it in here and it'll burn. You're not gonna get as many BTUs and it's not gonna be as efficient and it's kind of dumb. You should always season your wood. But I can throw anything in here. The newer models, you can't throw anything in. I've done a ton of videos on these units. I have one video where I show the entire cost. I broke down the entire cost of this. I showed all those costs. I did another video where I interviewed, this was about two years ago, I interviewed a central boiler dealer and he showed me all about their brand new central boiler. So I'm gonna leave a link in the description for both of those. We've burned every type of firewood heating mechanism, whatever you wanna call it in our homestead. We have a small indoor wood stove. We recently upgraded to a huge Amish cook stove and we have this. We love burning with firewood. It's sustainable. We have more trees here now than we did seven years ago when we first moved in. They grow like weeds here. We cut them ourselves. That's the other thing you wanna keep in mind if you're gonna have one of these. You need to have access to a ton of firewood. It doesn't financially make sense probably to purchase the firewood. We live on 20 acres, so you gotta take all these things into account. Are you hitting multiple areas? Do you have access to a ton of firewood? And are you ready to do a lot of work? Because it's a lot of work. I enjoy the exercise. It gets me out, it forces me to, to get outside. Uh, but frankly, we've fallen behind many times and also ordered uh, and paid for firewood, which is kind of unfortunate when I have so much of it here. So this is the CL6048 from Central Boiler. Uh, again, it, it's the, before the energy efficient ones came out. We load this thing up. You can load this thing up to the top and it'll go almost 24 hours. It depends on the temperature and the wood, but you can, this is a huge firebox. And you can put full rounds in here. So we can really load this up and then kind of forget about it. One question I get a lot is, is there water or antifreeze in it? We have water in ours. Antifreeze is very expensive and this runs through the furnace and the odds of this liquid freezing are very low because this is either turned down. If we were ever to go on like vacation for a week, I would just leave the furnace on. This would pump the water through the furnace, through that coil in there, and then the propane would blow through that and it would heat the water up. It would keep it from freezing. There's a little temperature gauge on the side that shows the temperature. There's a water level. You wanna maintain these really well. You wanna keep the door clean. You wanna change the gasket. Um, we have a, a sweeper, a chimney sweeper that hooks up to our drill. And I clean the chimney out with that to keep it uh, nice and clean. At the end of the season, I take a big scraper and scrape down all the creosote off the side of this. And we take a, uh, some rags and oil and rub the oil all the way around it so that in the off season, that steel's protected from, from rusting. Got a pretty good fire going in there right now. One of our most popular videos on Homestead How related to this thing or related to anyone that's burning firewood is uh, reusing your firewood ash. There's lots of uses to reuse your firewood ash. It's crazy, we did a video on that and it has over four million views right now. Another great use of ash. Another great use of ash. <laughs> So I'll leave a link to that in the description below, but there's a lot of stuff you can use, especially on a homestead. You can make soap with ash. You can take ash and you can put it in your garden and treat your soil after you do a, a, a soil test to see if it's needed. You can clean with it. They used to brush their teeth with it. It's great for getting traction. I got a little can of it in the back of my car in Wisconsin winter, you get a little ice, you can put that down. One of the really cool things with ash, if you have an indoor wood stove with a glass front, you get a little bit of newspaper, you get it wet, you put it in the ash, and you 
uh, put it across the front of your glass and it'll clean all the soot off. It'll make it look perfectly crystal clear. The other thing that's really cool with this, I get a lot of questions on it, this is hot water, right? So it heats up the water in our house. Heat exchanger, a big tube on the side of our water heater. And the water from the water heater comes in contact with that metal tube. And because it's hot, the hot water rises up to the top and it just keeps doing that. And this will heat up our hot water. In fact, right when our burning season starts, I turn the circuit breaker off on our electric water heater and we have completely wood fired water all year round, which is great. It's just like endless hot water. I mean, we almost never run out. With five girls, it's pretty, pretty darn amazing. If you're new to our channel, you might not know, but our, my family recently purchased our small town movie theater. It's just a small, historic little single screen theater. I've been doing so much research on the history. One of the really cool things was um, the theater has been open since 1859, since Lincoln was president. Before Lincoln was president, um, our building was actually built when he was 40 years old, which is crazy. In 1912, when the Titanic tragically sunk, they had a rudimentary picture show at our theater. This was before film was out. And one thing I found that was really cool is they had kind of a huge version of this on the Titanic, times about 25, I think it was. Uh, but instead of burning wood, they burned coal but the coal heated up water. It's like a steam engine or a steamboat. It would heat up the water, it would create steam, and that's what drove the Titanic. So they would have to fill up the Titanic with coal. They'd have to start heating up that coal before it departed. I think they said like two days before to generate enough steam. Not to be confused, this is an open system and it doesn't build up pressure. There's a little cap on the top, you can pull it off, you can just pour more water in it. So these are not steam. So in conclusion, after seven years of having our outdoor wood burner, was it worth it? Yes. For our situation, it was worth it. If I had just a little single family house, it would not have been worth it. The math wouldn't have worked out. First time that Alyssa's not here making popcorn. What are you trying to tell us, little guy? Oh, he's pointing to next week's movie. A Man Called Otto, starring Tom Hanks. We're going to be playing this for two weekends at Montello Theater. E.T. gives it... Does he have a thumb? E.T. gives it one... E.T. gives it... E.T. gives it two thumbs up. So, unlike some of the former videos where we spent the entire video at the movie theater, we're doing a lot more on the homestead with our outdoor wood burner. But uh, we're still very busy at the movie theater. Real quick shout out to Arlene. Thank you so much for coming into the theater, bringing us these wonderful cookies. You're amazing. And shout out to Karen, who owns the Silversmith's Jewelry Store in Montello. A small business has got to stick together. She's right down the road from Montello Theater. And our good friends at Sasquatch's Variety Shop, who are supporting the theater and so kindly offered to help us pass out our movie theater flyers out in Princeton. They've got a great store out there. Check them all out, please. We had a fun opening day to our movie theater weekend, got everything stocked up, had a really good crowd come in to see Whitney Houston's I Want to Dance with Somebody biopic, pretty good movie, and a pretty good turnout we're really happy with, and we've got some big events in store for the theater tomorrow. dog in there. We have another dog coming tonight. Carrie and I are on our way to the movie theater. We have a special showing today. There's our little dog kennel if you're new to our channel. That's one of the way we hedge our bets. That was one of the things I was going to talk about. We're going to the movie theater right now, Jen and I are, and one of the things I've done with business over the years that has helped me out is hedging my bets. And Jen, did you know this? I just learned this yesterday. I'm so dumb. Everyone probably knows this. Did you ever hear of a hedge fund? Yes. Hedge fund managers make some really good money. Well, a hedge fund is hedging your bet. It's when you're betting against like the market going well. And that's what we're doing at the movie theater and we do with several of our businesses. The way we're hedging our bets at the movie theater is not relying only and solely on admission and concessions, but how else can we make money from the movie theater? And that's what we're doing this morning, right Jen? Yeah. We have a party coming in. They rented out the entire theater. The cool thing with our theater is we've got a great projector, an awesome sound system. It's all state of the art. We can stream HBO, Netflix, Disney, whatever, 
we have to pay for those and license those. But if you're a private party and you have a Netflix account, you can just rent our screen and you can watch Netflix. You can play your PlayStation 5, you can do whatever you want. So we're renting out the entire theater. It's 10.30 in the morning, they're showing up at 11, so we gotta hurry. Um, I've already turned the heat on because I made everything in the movie theater smart, so I just press a button on my phone an hour early and everything heats up, all the lights will be on, the butter's warming up as we speak. And that's one of the ways we hedge our bets with the movie theater. The other way is we've been offering local advertising on the screen, and we're almost sold out. We're very, very thankful. All right, we're home. Time to fire up some popcorn and stop talking so much. Let's all go to the movies. Let's all go to the movie. Hello? Hello? One of the first times I came in here to the movie theater, I opened that door and I said hello. And I swear someone said hello back. The girls think it might have been someone outside, but we'll see. So this is world famous E.T. He's been taking a beating in some of our recent videos. He's watching the trailers. Does the trailer color look off? Don't abuse him! Emma, say you're sorry. That wasn't a high five. I think you killed him. He tried to kill Janelle the other day. She gave him a hug and he choked her out. This is the running joke. Katie thought this was a piggy bank and she thought there was a dollar in there and I said, no, that's where they keep all the Reese's pieces. So here's my app. And right before we came here, oh, I can press it again now. Warm up, light on temp. This is a little thing I set up. And now the movie theater upstairs temperature set to 68. Downstairs set to 68. The theater fan lights, which are those lights right there, turn on. Up here's our projector room. This is like a museum taking a step back in time. We got all these old films I've been exploring and looking at. Hundreds of trailers. Here's our film projector. Before that, there's these two windows. We used to have two carbon arc projectors in here running next to each other. They had chimneys, that's what this hole is for. For a long time they had um, two film projectors like this that used xenon lamps. And then I think in the 80s they upgraded to this. This is called the platter system. And that allowed them to go down to just one projector. And the projectionist would come in, they'd splice the trailers and all of the film together into one big huge reel on that platter system. And this place was just a mess with film because the film would run through those little pulleys. It would run all the way across the room and it would go into this pulley on the projector run through here so you could see the picture, run through the sound head so you could pull a sound off the film, and then it would run all the way back there and it would rewind itself. That was a major innovation for projectionists because it allowed them to have one big reel, one projector, and then it would rewind everything. Still a ton of work for the projectionists though, because at the end of the weekend, they'd have to take that big reel of film and break it back down. They'd have to pull the little trailers out. These are the little trailers. They'd have to pull all those little trailers off and then they have to pull the film off. This is only 20 minutes of film, so you could have six, seven, eight of these for a full movie. They'd have to break these down and put them into canisters and send them all back to the studio. So the projectionist had a lot of work. And I am very fortunate and blessed. This projector is amazing. I come up here and I go like this. I basically create a little playlist. I put some trailers in. I put the movie in. Movies come on these big discs and I literally just press play and then I walk away and it goes and shuts itself off when it's done so. This corner I have yet to explore. I don't even know what some of this stuff is. Those are the old xenon lamps and those are the, there's a scope and a flat lens over there. A Bunch of other stuff. <clears throat> I'm gonna throw Back to the Future in there quick and make sure everything is going as it should be. That is on two, which is flat. Oh, it's nice and warm in here. What a great soundtrack on this movie. Jen's making popcorn on our world famous popcorn machine. And I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Our popcorn machine is from the 1950s when Dwight Eisenhower was president. And it's made millions of bags of popcorn maybe. And that kettle, it's kind of like a cast iron skillet for all my homesteading friends out there that cook on cast iron. You know, nothing tastes better than making some bacon and eggs on a cast iron skillet. You get that skillet nice and seasoned. It retains some of those flavors. It just tastes so much better. 
That's why movie theater popcorn is 100 times better than what you make at home. This popcorn over here, Amish country. If you Google and search around best popcorn in the world, this one kept coming up. So this was one of the many that we tested and this one was a clear winner. And our first taste test, it was like 18 to one. Our old popcorn lost to the new popcorn. This had 18 votes to the other one won, so. Our guests are here. So for this private party, they decided to watch the movie The Great Outdoors, starring the great John Candy, Dan Aykroyd. Really love that film. And then they played Xbox afterwards. It was a big extended family with grandma and aunts and uncles, and it was a really, really nice group. Really awesome. Watched a really awesome movie. I wish I could have sat in there, but I could hear it, so I kind of remember what was going on. Kept coming out for concessions, which was really great. Very they friendly. They had a ton everything. of concessions. That yeah, they had so a nice. lot of concessions. Really great people. I'm jealous. They had, the, it really. they had the yeah. sweetest grandmother, and everyone was out giving her hugs. Yeah. We don't have any grandparents left, do we? No. Yeah, we, we don't have any grandparents left. Okay, no. Big, happy family. Yes. Really cute grandparents like, there. Can we come in your family? Can we be part of it? They wear pajamas. It should be a service. Rent, and... rent a grandma for a day. Right? <laughs> to hang out with that lady. She was so nice. <laughs> she came out and we were playing. They watched a movie and then they played video games. They were here for three hours. Yeah. She gave us a way too generous of a tip, too. Yeah. That was really fun. No, it was great. Yeah, she said she had a good time. She's going to come back. It's a place for her. She said if, you know, she had the grandkids by her house, they would all just be kind of sitting around not doing anything. So she saw it online where I had it posted. And she said, how great is that? You can watch a movie and then the kids can play video games. So that's exactly what we did. And we have another one of these next week on Saturday and one Sunday. Timing was perfect because we have like a half an hour, we gotta turn everything over, we gotta clean everything, and we have our four o'clock showing, which the doors open at three yeah. o'clock. So right now it's between our private showing and a regular showing, we have a little bit of time. So this is one of the huge benefits. I'm not taking any of this for granted, we're so blessed and we're so lucky, but Jen and I, after we get done cleaning this little pile up here, we get to catch up on some of our favorite YouTube videos, right Jen? Jen and I have been watching them for years. This is just a great, great couple. They bought this property, uh, nothing built on it, just empty land. They lived in a camper. They really roughed it, and they built that whole house you can see in that thumbnail there. Timber frame house, beautiful job. I learned so much, I knew nothing about timber framing. So much great and wonderful content that we get to watch for free. And one really interesting thing about this business, unlike our other businesses, is we're not in this to make money. Does it sound dumb? No, because it's true, we love this place. We haven't taken a single penny yet. And we could, because we've had some really good showings. And they're all going back into the building. It's a historic building. That's kind of why we fell in love with it. This is a passion project. That's part we of the reason history. we did it. We love the movies and we love the history, and this building has so much history. So you can see from this awesome thing here, I'll leave a link in the description, someone sent us this. I put this together. This is the building in 1888, but it goes back to 1859. This is in 1914. This is in the 50s. Dwight Eisenhower was president then. That's when we got our popcorn machine 70 years ago. And then this is more recent time. And we're keeping, this is the only, one of the only businesses I think you could find. Maybe we shouldn't be classified as a business. Maybe we should be a nonprofit. We're literally, our goal is to make this sustainable so families can come bring your kids here. A movie ticket is $5. Where else can you find that? The, the average in the US is $10. It's like $9.50 for a movie ticket. Our small popcorn, I mean a lot of our stuff is almost at cost. Our small popcorn is $2. We are making profits. We're not selling it at cost because the building requires a lot of money to run. It's a lot of electricity and gas to heat the building. I think we need a new air conditioning system. So we aren't making profits, but we're not taking or putting any of them in our pockets. Our goal is to have this family friendly, fair prices for generations to follow. We want anyone to be able to come here. We had a school group come in here two weeks ago. And the teacher said, a lot of those kids have never been to a movie. I, I can't believe kids haven't been to a movie. Right? We've done a lot of uh, free days. We did a free day for teachers, free weekend for teachers. We did free for veterans a couple times now. And I mentioned in a previous video, if you're maybe like a single parent and you're struggling and you can't afford to take your kid to the movie, or if your kid has never been to a movie, come talk to myself or Jen and we will set you up. Just so you know too, I have to put this disclosure on so we don't get in trouble. We have to sign contracts this big with the studios. People are like, oh, you can just let them in, that's nice of you. We're not just letting them in. We're giving you a ticket 
The other half of this ticket goes to the studio, and we're paying the studio. The studios, a little quick education for y'all, when we play a movie like this, a Disney movie, whatever, when we play a new movie, a majority of your ticket price, the $5 you're paying us, goes back to the studio. And when we do veterans for free, we're not just letting them in. We're counting their ticket and we're paying the studio their price. We have a contract with them, it's the right thing to do, and we're gonna always continue to do that. It's the same thing, if someone's struggling, they wanna come in and they, want, they can't afford it, we will cover the cost of your ticket out of our pockets and the studio will still get paid. While the Sunday movie is playing, I get the sign ready and I go outside and change the marquee and I change the posters. We had a heck of a turnout for our last showing of I Want to Dance with Somebody and next weekend we're playing, you guessed it, you read it, A Man Called Otto starring Tom Hanks. I just got the sign done and now I have to go pass out the flyers. And that'll be our turnover day and then we gotta go get something to eat. Thank you so much for watching Homestead How. Here are some of our favorite photographs. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, thumbs up, comment, and share with a friend. It really helps us out.